In this video, I'm going to assemble the Charlieplex RGB shield for Arduino Uno that I designed and used to make my word clock, which is this, uh, which I demonstrated in a previous video. To do that, you need resistors, the shield, some RGB LEDs, it's actually 80 RGB LEDs that have a common ground pin and a pin header. In the next version, I'm also going to add a button so that you can easily change the time when you're setting the clock. But for the first round, I didn't originally plan to have it be a word clock, so I didn't add a button. So to start assembly, I first put on the resistors. To do that, I add a little bit of solder to one side of each pin pad. Then I open the resistors. I set some on the table. And then I hold the resistor with the tweezers and remelt that solder. And because these are resistors, they can be white side up or black side up. But since I'm working on a prototype here, I um, like to keep the resistors with the numbers side up so that later I can change them. If I decide the lights need to be brighter or darker, etc. Now I don't have to unsolder them to figure out what size they were. Okay, and then now that I have one side of each resistor soldered, I go ahead and solder the other side. I'm going to clean this up because some of these have too much solder on them. Okay, so now that all the resistors are on, I'm going to start putting the LEDs on. And the first thing to do to trim the leads. So I'm going to do some of them. I don't want to actually count up to 80. I'll just do less than 80, solder those on, and then do them in batches. So basically I use a pair of wire cutters and some have a thickness of them or on them. In some sense don't, like this one is wedged. So for these, I make sure that the sharp end is here. 
and I hold the LED like this and just trim it. And then they all end up the same length with ones that are thinner. You have to be a little bit careful, but I usually trim them somewhere in this marked line. So basically this edge, you can see how they're sort of squished on the LED leads. Somewhere on that line should be good enough. Once I have some of the RGB LEDs um, trimmed, I can start soldering them onto the board. And the first thing that's important to notice is which pin is actually the ground pin. Basically, which way are they supposed to go on the board? Is it this way? Or is it this way? And if you look at these LEDs, on one side, there's a flat part and on these pins, there's a square pin and all the other pins are round. Also, there's a slight flatness to the side that's the first pin. And if you look on the inside, it looks like there's a large Y part and that large Y is actually the ground pin and that's the second pin. So all of these, should have the flat part facing this way. And the Y part like this. Okay. So then I flip it over and I take my soldering iron and I carefully just solder one pin on the LED. And then I check to make sure that it's actually stuck in the board and that it's not got the solder up at the top of the pin, but rather connecting the pin to the board. And this is why I actually pre-trim the LEDs short, is that it's completely possible to tell which way the LED is without long leads. In the originals, The ground pin is the long pin, but you can tell based on where the Y is and where the flat side is, where the ground pin is supposed to be as well. So it doesn't really matter if you keep that indicator. At the same time, if you have these leads really long, it's very easy to have your solder end up way too high and not connecting the pin to the board. So I avoid doing that. So then, after I have my first LED put in, I basically make an entire row of them and only solder the one pin on the entire row.
So then at this point, I look at all of them and just double check that I have them in the correct orientation because it's much easier to unsolder them when you only have the one pin soldered than it is to unsolder them when all four pins are soldered. It's still possible, it's just more effort. The other thing is you can look at them this way and make sure that they're all in a straight line. If one of them is tilted, when you only have one pin, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So, for example, I just made this one point a little bit sideways. I can look this way and see that this one is the one that needs to be straightened out, and it's very easy to do that once, or when you only have one pin that's soldered. So I take it, I hold the board, and I put my finger on this LED and then I melt the solder and I push up and that'll straighten it out. When you look at it this way, it's not so obvious which one is out of alignment. And then I go ahead and just solder the one pin on all of the LEDs. So I decided to go get some masking tape because that makes keeping these in the same spot a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a whole row at one time using masking tape to hold them in place. And at this point, you can start looking at it this way too. So you can see that these are all pretty well aligned. And you can see in this direction, they're all pretty well aligned. And if they're curved this direction or that direction, you can start straightening them out as you go. Now to trim more leads. So then I continue 
to solder these on. And I'm going to actually realign these two before I do that. Once you have one pin soldered for each LED and you're satisfied with the alignment of all the LEDs, it's time to start soldering all the other pins on all the other LEDs. So I do that by just going ahead and adding a little bit of solder to each one. And at this point, it's very easy to end up bridging them or not adding enough solder. Um, inevitably, that's going to happen to some of the LEDs. And what I'm going to do is I'll just optically check to make sure that they're all good before I plug it in and finish soldering this. In the end, if you miss one, it doesn't matter. Um, you won't break your Arduino. You won't break basically anything electrically. It just means that the LEDs won't do what you expect them to do. And I'll cover that in the debugging. But just to show you how I optically check them, the easiest way I've found is to turn on my cell phone and use the camera light as a flashlight and then just set my PCB on top. And it might be hard to see in this, but what you should see is a square or a rectangle and three ovals. And I made a drawing just to be more clear. Basically, it should look like a rectangle, and this is your first pin, this is your ground pin, this is your green pin, and this is your blue pin. And if they all look separate and they all look completely filled, then that's a good connection. But 
If you end up with ones that have a hole in them and they kind of look like a bullseye, then you need to add solder to make it a better joint. Completely filled, that's okay, don't worry about that pin. And then when you see two that are stuck together and you can see metal between them, you need to remove some of the solder. Now let me check if any of these happen to be that way. And actually these turned out okay, so I'm gonna bridge one and just show you how to fix it. So on this one, I'm gonna intentionally add too much solder to bridge two of the LED lines. Actually, I need to add a little bit more here. Okay. So in this case, the two pins that are on the outside are bridged together. So what I do, because these are just LEDs and they're pretty mechanically stable, I just heat this up a little bit and check to see if they debridged because sometimes that works and it didn't in this case. The other thing I can do is stick my soldering iron between the two pins and then quickly remove it because sometimes then solder comes off. In this case that didn't work. And then the last thing I try and do is I melt those two pins at the same time and I hit it on the table and if you notice a very small piece of solder came off and another piece came off there and then I check again and these are still bridged but there's less solder on the pins now so if I remelt it and pull my soldering iron away these are now no longer bridged, which may be difficult to see in this video, but you'll take my word for it. So then I just go through and do that for all of them.
now that I have all the pins soldered for the LEDs, I go through and I really check each one because at this point, it's the easiest time to fix any soldering problems. So I take that light and I go through LED by LED checking that I don't see any bridges and I fix them as I find them. So there's a bridge here on D34. So I take it, hit it on the table, hit it on the table. Then I touch the soldering iron again to those two pins, make sure I have two good joints. And I check again when it's good. And then I have another problem here where all three of these are bridged. I take my soldering iron, melt it, take the soldering iron, melt it. And that's better. Once you've checked all of the LEDs to make sure that none of them are poorly soldered, so that means filling up all of these holes and removing all of these bridges, then I go ahead and I put the pin headers on. And I do that by taking this and measuring out a piece that's the right length and then breaking it. Then I flip it over and I solder the pin header on. And I start by just soldering one pin on each piece. And then I make sure that it's lying flat on the board and that all of these pin headers are basically at a right angle so that later I can plug it in to the Arduino. Once I like the angle, I just go ahead and solder all the other pin headers or pins on the pin header.
And then I just check the pins to make sure that they all have a cone of solder on them and that it's all shiny. And then I'm done with the board. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and check all of this and debug all the problems that I have with this board. So thank you for watching.